tanned with the hair on. It can be done, but you don't ever put it in a place where it's going to be rubbed. Walking on it would just be the worst. Uh, you don't make clothing out of it because you imagine all these little pieces of hair in, in your inside your shirt. Uh, that's going to be pretty uncomfortable. You think going to the barber shop someday is a little bit bad, and you get hair down the back of your neck. Well, it would be worse with this. A deer skin is very valuable. Ah, I shouldn't say very valuable. Uh, it is valuable. It has some value. Uh, for pioneers, it was very valuable. For mountain men, it was very valuable. That's what they made their clothes out of. Summer or winter, they got a deer skin. And that isn't the best comfort by any means, but it's one of the best as far as wearing. You can wear it through the brush and through the rain and the snow and so forth, and uh, it, it still works and it's functional. Uh, when you make a coat out of deer skin, if you want to do that, uh, it makes a beautiful jacket, but it takes about six deer heights from adult deer. This is not an adult. This is a deer that would have been born last spring. Most deer are born in the last two weeks of May, first two weeks of June. And so, for all practical purposes, this is six months old. And yet, many people wouldn't think it was adult, but when you compare it to a bigger one, then it's, the size is, is quite noticeable. So it takes six adults to make a, a deer skin jacket, in case you're interested. Uh, the skin on the back, the, from about here over, on across the back is the good part. This skin is so thin on the stomach, they sometimes use it to make gloves and purses and things of that type. But uh, not jackets, because it's just two skins, too thin. So they're only a part of that skin is, is usable uh, for the height. When deer hunters are hunting, you know, when they end up and dress all the deer, they don't want to take the intestines home. We don't usually eat the intestines. Some people eat certain organs, a heart, a liver, <coughs> some of those things, and it's good food if you don't have a cholesterol problem. But internal organs are high in cholesterol. So some people it's good food for them, some it's not. Uh, liver, probably one of the, the best Liver is probably one of the best foods there is. If you could only have one food, how long could you live? Uh, you'd live longer with liver than you could anything else. But you surely would get sick of it, I'm sure. And whatever you, if you only had one food to eat. Indians and early Americans, when they shoot a deer, the internal organs are what they eat first. They have more nutrition in it than the meat. We go into a store. Uh, if you bought intestines and you could buy steak, there's more food value in the intestines. But we don't eat that. Uh, that's not our culture. There are some parts in the world that they do eat that. And uh, food value-wise, uh, they have it right. Well, in deer hunting, you don't want to carry all that stuff home that you don't want to begin with. So you end up and you field dress. In other words, you cut them open and you take out the insides and you leave them. And usually the foxes and the crows and the hawks and so forth will stop and have that stuff cleaned up in a relatively short time. If what little is left, the bugs and beetles will get and finish it and you went back there a few months later and you couldn't find it that ever even any evidence of it being there. When the hunters dress a deer, they always cut them in the stomach. The hide is the thinnest, it's easiest, that opens up the best, so it's the easiest way to dress them. And of course, it does not damage the good part of the skin, which they might or might not use. If you don't use it, you can usually sell it for anywhere from two to five dollars at, at, at different places. So uh, if it's been damaged and cut in the middle and the back, it's worthless as far as nobody will give you anything for it. 
when we are working with this today, we're going to do this the opposite <coughs> of what a deer hunt. We're going to cut it on the back. So that ideally, I'd like to cut it down the back and cut it down the sides here. And then we can hopefully open this right up. And you can see what the inside is going to look like. Now, in order to do that, what we usually do is take off this front shoulder. The front shoulder is kind of heavy on deer, in that all these bones and so forth that are through here are not hooked up to the skeleton. They're not hooked up to the backbone. Your arm is hooked up to your the rest of the skeleton in your body. But not so with the deer. So with a knife, you can take and cut off this front shoulder and never touch a bone. And it sometimes seems very surprising to people that that, that is possible. But it, but it is. And so we're going to end up and do that for our starters. And you see, just that much of a cut right there would ruin the hide as far as it being sold to some other place. Excuse me, please. With that silence, 